Yay. So we go live early and hang out and talk. Yep. So you we're gonna have it. a we're gonna have a we we t we typically use this as a little bit of a sound check mm -hmm. and a way to kind of you know uh, hey. do some Q and A. Hello, yeah. everyone. Um, Sweet. Yeah. So happy to get to see everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. everybody. I can't believe this. We've got like folks from all over. It's super exciting. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. I've got my laptop. That's why you're gonna see me kind of looking down and uh checking on the chat we i am beyond excited we have a friend of ours who we haven't seen in many years for oh my gosh you're right four years um and i can't believe it like we were like seeing each other all the time at festivals and things and then all of a sudden four years pass and uh so but now we finally get to see him our good friend aaron kime is here in studio hi everybody i know <laughs> we're here. here and i wore my rainbow strap Woohoo! it's actually nicole's it. rainbow strap <laughs> <laughs> so i'll claim it for i today. love it we see so many people that we know in the chat too thank you guys so much for joining us uh yeah. skip of course is here um with judy thank you guys so much stephanie sterling i saw you you ch chatting earlier um just so many so many folks from all over we have all over the world switzerland awesome and um, i'm going to stay off camera today since we're using up all our yes. main cameras um but i did want to say that i was lucky to have met aaron and nicole very early on my uh kind of professional mm -hmm. ukulele journey um i think hood no I met you the when you Eugene, were still in college. Eugene you Oktoberfest um, with Victoria. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't just you and Nicole at the time. It was actually the band. Yeah, this is when I was traveling with Boulder Acoustic Society. Yes, which was phenomenal. Yeah, super um, mm -hmm. So I've been very, very fortunate to, to kind of see how um, th these pros really do it. Um, and it was so inspiring to see. And not only from the artist side but then meeting nicole and aaron as a duo and with little henry yes gave henry. sarah and i the confidence that maybe we can have may, a kid maybe we can still do this as our, our jobs and, and still <laughs> raise a family and and do it yeah. like aaron and nicole because they make it look so easy mm. and <laughs> it's super easy <laughs> um they did make it look yeah. easy <laughs> um but i i give you guys so much credit for how much you've done Mm -hmm. And still are incredible parents, um, yeah. and we can't, you know, thank you enough for, for inspiring us to be able to, to try ourselves too. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, just changing diapers and inspiring people. You know, that's, what we do. <laughs> that's the way it is. I love it. Yeah, it was super funny. I was like m meeting with other folks on the islands, and then they knew we were coming to see you folks, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, have you met Craig and Sarah before?" And I was like. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know Craig. <laughs> how, how long? You, oh, when, when did you meet Craig? Like, was it that Reno thing? And I was like, I knew Craig when I knew Craig when he still played the cello. Yeah, you, know? you knew Craig before Sarah. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I didn't tell too many stories. Don't worry, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot less whiskey involved for both of us nowadays. So that's, that's true. Yeah. That's yes. very true. Thankfully, thankfully. No, it's been cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. Uh, it's weird. It's like it's like our friend Joe at Connie Lea does. Like he's like, oh, we should make a forest to raise our own koa because it's the right thing to do. And then suddenly all his neighbors are doing the right thing too, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so it's like you just do your things and you do them as best you can, and then you don't realize that there's other folks who are you know can gain some yeah some knowledge or some inspiration from it. And you don't do that stuff because you think anyone else cares, but it turns out people do. You know. Yeah. So we're trying to to trying to make a creative life and have a kid and. It's always a challenge and there's uh there's it's not always easy it's not always good there's therapy involved but <laughs> it's okay we make it oh uh, i feel like that's that that way for just being a parent in general there's good days and bad days yeah. i mean also henry's eight years old now I can't amazing believe that. and so it's just like every time we go somewhere and and i was like oh henry you met this you met these people and it was like well yeah when he was like 18 months old or <laughs> And somebody would be like, oh, Henry, did you have fun when you guys went to New Zealand? And Henry's like, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Know. Well, we, we had to remind him. We actually went on tour with him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He had forgotten um, oh, yeah. about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to tour with Henry. That uh, What did we call yeah. that tour? It was the... Uh, 
It was us and Steve and Kate. Ukulele, oh, the, ro- ukulele the Roadshow. Yes. yes. With Kate and Steve. Yes. That, that was, was really fun. fun. Those were good venues. Dude. Yes. yes. Like, that was really fun. That really was fun. a blast. We got to, to, to be in the UK together. Mm-hmm. That's right. We did that a couple times. Yeah. yeah. And yep. uh, Craig helped us go to Australia once. That was really fun. Oh, yeah. Right? That was really fun. Mm-hmm. I miss Australia. Hopefully we'll get to go back. I wonder if our visas allowed back in Australia yet. Because it's been 10 years, I bet, though. I bet they'll let us back in. Yeah. Yeah, we overstayed on accident. Remember oh, no. when we went to Cannes? <gasps> oh! It was not our fault we overstayed. Like, there was paperwork with the festival or whatever. Yeah. So we, when we were leaving the airport, they're like, mm. oh, yeah, you can't come back for five years unless you get a lawyer. <laughs> oh, my God. So we just haven't tried to come back. <laughs> I did not realize that. That's yeah. hilarious. Wow. That was a fun trip. We've all learned something new today. Mm. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and... um housekeeping real quick uh don't forget gang that we've got um so we do show everything on screen um if you want to have all of the materials in your hot little hands you can you can download them from our website craigandsarah.com slash live and that does help support these live streams as well yes yes it does help support the live streams and then we can and there's the standard packet which is everything we're showing on screen and then there's also the scholar packet um which has an Aaron was generous enough to give an extra song, which I believe is from your baritone book. Yeah, I rewrote the, I just tweaked the, a song from the baritone book. Nice. Yeah. So. so there's that, and um, and if you like that, definitely check out the baritone book um, from their website. I have in the standard packet and in the um, scholar packet, I've got a link to their store because they have a lot of amazing books. Nicole does all of the artwork, mm-hmm. and uh, everything is like all handwritten. It's they're beautiful and just beautiful beautifully laid out as well and the material is uh incredible i actually have the claw hammer book that i have enjoyed working through on our banjo ukulele that aaron made us so that's the other thing to also check out too bean sprout musical instruments uh if you'd like to get on the waiting list to have aaron make you yeah well instrument. what is the current uh kind of wait list um situation? we are currently building or we're taking orders for september <coughs> of this year oh sweet and so and we do it not like as a wait list that's quite that casual like people put a deposit down right so mm-hmm. we're taking deposits for september um which is awesome job security we appreciate everyone's support yeah, and they are awesome instruments. Whether it is the banjo ukuleles or the standard ukuleles, or even a banjo, you could also get two. Yeah. So, um, just it, it, what was it? What's the term? I loved it. Was it made total sense? Like playable folk art. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. I thought that was a beautiful description for the kind of instruments that Aaron makes. And then, and also in the scholar packet too, the other thing that's in there is a mini lesson on. Uh, Basically, it's like an extension of last live stream where I go through and show you a different variety of uh, scale, excuse me, um, scale variations and then kind of talk through like swinging eighth notes and getting you to sort of practice your scales in and out of order so that you can uh, utilize that. And it's it's a relief. It'll be a fun mini lesson. I haven't recorded it yet, but the place marker is there and it will be up by tomorrow. Um, but all the materials are there. And the other thing, too, about uh, John Greer's Two Step, that's a song that Aaron uh, has given us for the Scholar Packet. There's actually a video tutorial link um, in that, and I have that posted on our site, too. But make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel because he's got a bunch of other great lessons, yeah, too. Yeah, and Aaron, I mean, we still have like five minutes before we officially start. Did you mm-hmm. want to mention a little bit of um, why you're here? Oh, yeah, yeah. So we <clears> came <throat> to Hawaii on this trip mainly as a woodworking uh, luthery research trip. Um, I got a grant from the Mortis and Tenon magazine, which is a hand tool woodworking magazine. And they put out a call for research about pre-industrial woodworking and they were interested in folks coming up with things from around the world or they were a little different than their normal furniture making kind of stuff. And so I put in a grant to come to Hawaii and see instruments made in Hawaii in the 1880s and 90s, study those instruments, the tools that were used, the materials they're made of, the shapes and the styles. And then I'm going to go home this spring and I'm going to build some musical instruments in the style of the, of the makers from the 1880s and 90s with only my hand tools. And I'm going to document it for the magazine. Um, I wish Craig was there to take pictures, but I'll just be iPhoning it. <laughs> <as we go. laughs> um, yeah, so on this trip, uh, I went to the Bishop Museum and I saw uh, seven instruments from the archives of the Bishop Museum. And I went to a private collector and I saw 12 instruments from the 1880s and 90s. That's amazing. Um, and uh, we got to play them and, and hang out and study. 
And then the rest of this trip has been some music, some tourism, and then a lot of vi visiting other builders and just talking story and hanging out with folks. It's been really cool. Um, Nicole and I have, I basically made my living from the ukulele for like more than 15 years. Um, but we've never come to the islands and kind of paid tribute. And I think we always uh, stayed away from the island stuff because, well, we play other kinds of music and I don't want to pretend to be something I'm not, right? Like yeah. we didn't. Uh, and so we just kind of gave it its space in a way. Um, but it was time to come here and and uh, do and pay tribute. So we've been doing a lot of that, going around to other shops and other builders and and seeing what, what comes of it. And I've been shocked to learn that folks actually care what we think and do. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of always thought that we're outsiders and um, and it wouldn't matter. But people have been really supportive and interested. So anyway, yeah. it's been a great trip. And I'm excited to get back in the shop. Yeah. And I have a suitcase of wood to bring home to me. So. <laughs> That's so exciting. <laughs> I can't wait to see what you build with it. It's going to be cool. I think one of the things that I find really wonderful about being here is people can recognize, and it's all about intention, right? And so people can recognize when you have like really good intentions and that you're, in, that you're respectful and like the whole idea that this trip is, you know, paying tribute. It's not just like, we're gonna go Waikiki and have a great time, which there's yeah. a time and place for that. Yeah, but, we did that last night, it was fun, yeah. yeah. But, you know, but you're here also just like for, it's a cultural thing and it's something just uh, a historical thing. And yeah. I think that gets people excited. So I, that's. Do I have a second to tell one more quick thing? Yeah. Yes. Sure, yeah. I, I learned um, a really cool lesson yesterday. Every other place we visited, it, our visit has been timed and set up in such a way that when we got there, I could meet the people first and deal with things, and then we could give gifts right away and mm -hmm. do all that. And because we wanted, we wanted to leave more things on the island than we took home, mm -hmm. right? And so we made all these handmade gifts, and we've been giving to people wherever we go. And yesterday, because of the weird situation of where we were and what was going on, I didn't get to meet the boss ahead of time, and it was so crowded, I didn't get to, and I didn't get to give any gifts. And uh, it just was the way the day worked, right? I yeah. just had to go with it. And uh, it may not be that, but that that trip uh, was a different visit mm -hmm. than the other visits were. Yeah. Because I didn't get to set intention with the person right away. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's fine. Next time, maybe. You know, yeah. you can't win them all. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, did, it was different. Yeah. Well, I think especially the next time, too, people now have a feel for how serious you are about this, too. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be different. Yeah. I mean, just planting be, seeds, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And somebody actually did have a question. <clears throat> what percentage of the process of building an ukulele is the same as back in that era? It's, it can be a lot. Yeah. It could be a lot. Like, I already use hand tools for most everything, and I do have machines to speed things along. But there are other places here in Hawaii where most of the instrument is made with a computer-controlled tool, mm -hmm. and that's awesome. I don't use any computer-controlled tools already. So um, for me to uh, to pivot and to make one with just my hand tools is not going to be a big thing. But I've done the extra work to make it easy, right? Right. Um, but, you know, the, even the, the, the shops they were in in the 1890s, they were big furniture and cabinet-making shops, but they also were making their little ukuleles. They had access to power equipment. Mm -hmm. They had a bit like my bandsaw is from the 1890s. Oh yeah. So like if I choose to use my bandsaw on this project, I'm okay with that. Like yeah. it's like they had a bandsaw. They had a planer. There were sawmills. This was not people in a hut yeah. with a pocket knife. Like these were trained <laughs> cabinet makers from another place who were here making these things. Mm -hmm. So it's not that much different. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty easy. Yeah. That's uh, that's really exciting. That was a great question. Thanks, Carol, for asking yeah. that question. I love it. Now, Craig, should I mention anything about tomorrow? Oh, yeah, sure. So just one quick, <clears throat> one other, the only other housekeeping thing I have is tomorrow, don't forget, we have our uh, backyard concert premiere of Brittany Paiva. Uh, that concert is going to air at 9 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. If you join us live, make sure to log into your YouTube account and join us in the live chat so that you can win goodies. I actually just finally mailed out goodies from... Uh, the last concert uh, this week. So those of you who uh, emailed me back after getting notified that you won, um, your goodies are out in the mail. And uh, But definitely join us tomorrow, Brittany Paiva, for our next Backyard Concert premiere, 9 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time. It's going to be a really 
it's a really fun concert and it's I love getting to see her in her element again um, so just remember that for tomorrow so you can spend the weekend with us uh, and someone asked, better high G or low G for today, Aaron? Oh, I'd be, I'll be playing high G, but yes. you can do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta pick a fight, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> no, it works either way. I tend to try to write stuff so that it doesn't really matter, but, mm -hmm. you know. And then someone asked about the drop tuning in the packet. Oh, yeah, that's, that's for John Greer. Yeah, for the Scholar packet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be doing a different tuning. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Cool. Well, that's all right. And for that one... Um, just you can just tune down to the F, right? Yeah, like you don't need a new string. The no, person no, was like, I've never done that before. Just tune it down. It'll be a little more slack and you'll be fine. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, retuning and why and how and we'll, I'll give the whole global reasons behind it and yeah. it'll, be, it'll be safe. Awesome. <laughs> There'll be yeah. hugs. All right, let's do it. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay, folks, hi. We're going to make some music today. I love being in Craig and Sarah's setup because it's so high tech. There's <laughs> cables everywhere. And hey, there's me. And there's the stuff right there. And there's Craig. And we're all here. Um, yeah. So we're going to be teaching some finger picking today. Um, there are a lot of you folks I know who have already been through some of these lessons with me. So we'll just circle through some things that are familiar to you. For the newbies, uh, we, maybe not, we'll, we maybe won't master every technique today, but we'll be planting the seeds for the future. And it'll be fun. And remember, it's recorded. So it's you can recorded. always go back. And you can come back, yeah. So first we're gonna go through two pages here that are from our book, Fingerstyle Ukulele. At the bottom of these pages, there's links to the vid teaching videos. You can go do this stuff later. Um, and basically what I'm talking about is, instead of playing our chords like this all the time, sometimes we can pick with our fingers in order to make accompaniment patterns or to play little solos or whatever, and it just breaks up the texture of your ukulele life. Um, last night when we were, uh, eating with Brian and Halle, we were talking about that if we all strum our ukes like this, it's like there's multiple piano players just playing three notes like this in the middle of the piano. <laughs> yeah. And like if you went and saw a piano player do that, you'd be like really bummed. <laughs> so with we can do a little bit to play this note here and this note there and this part of the chord here and this part of the chord there, and it just makes it sound better. So if I'm like just doing a simple song, um, if I was playing but I chose to use my fingers right uh, it just sounds a different texture and you might have fun with it so let's start with our picking patterns and uh, we're starting with the thumb pitch pattern we got to get our geography together make sure we're speaking the same language the string that's closest to your face up here this is your fourth string it's a G note then the third string is your C string the uh, second string is your E string, and your first string is the one closest to the ground. That's your A string. So four is up here, one is down here. Um, oh, also, don't worry about picks. I know you're all asking about it. We'll yes, deal with it later. Are. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Chill out. We'll get there. Uh, we're going to the whole, for the whole day today, we're gonna, our thumb is gonna play the fourth string and the third string. That's its territory. So you can even just go back and forth between them to get a little tick-tock going to like... That's sort of the accompaniment pattern for all these things. And then your first finger is going to get stuck right on the E string. And it's going to basically live there for now. And your middle finger is going to get stuck on the first string. And it's going to live there for now. So all the things I'm going to ask you to do, thumb travels and fingers don't. They're going to stay there for now. Some of you don't want the thumb to travel, but I'll tell you why I do it. Um, the music I mainly play is string band music that comes mainly from guitar and um, banjo and steel guitar music. And in that, there's usually six strings, and so the thumb has a bigger spread that needs to be responsible for. But that sound of the thumb playing two different notes gives like a forward motion to the music that is important for dance music. Mm -hmm. So I know some of you would rather just play one note on the thumb, and there are lots of cool musics that do that, but I like to hear them bounce between two notes for that driving music. So mm -hmm. even though the music I play is traditional string band music from a different part of the world, it's still dance music. And so the dancing, I think, is better with that. So let's do your thumb a little bit. Start in the C note, and we'll just go C and G, third string, fourth string.
And once that starts to feel good, instead of just playing the fourth string, we can also play the first string at the same time in a pinch. So that's thumb and uh, middle finger playing the two outside strings of our instrument. So I got thumb on the stri C string, and then I'll pinch the outside strings. So thumb on the C, and then pinch the outside strings. And if you want, let's press down. We can press down a C chord while we do that. And even that is really simple, but it is a musical texture. It's useful. And just for fun, go ahead and switch to F, but don't change what you do. You can do that for a while. And then you could even switch to G7 and keep doing it. So that's what I call the thumb pinch pattern. We've At the top of the page, we've got it just written out in open strings. That's how you practice it, just to get your fingers moving. But after a while, if your ear gets sick of that sound, you can't add the chords, and that's why I put chords underneath it. I arbitrarily picked three easy chords, but you could do different chords, and it, mm -hmm. you'll enjoy hearing what the sound is like. Yes, Teacher Sarah? Picking over the sound hole, where, do you prefer, where should they be picking? Pick wherever you want right now. Excellent. Yeah, don't worry about it. Later on, you'll get crazy and want to pick different places, but pick where your body feels comfy. I guess I pick more over the sound hole because there's more space for your fingers to get in there compared to over the fretboard. But if I play over the fretboard, it just has a different tone. If I play back by the bridge, it's a different tone, but just go where your body wants to be. <clears throat> um, yeah, so let's play an E minor chord. You folks know that one, probably. This is E minor, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So 0, 4, 3, 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you do the thumb pinch on E minor, that's a nice sound. Ooh, look, live action chord writing in. It's like picture page. There you go. <laughs> it might sound cool to go from E minor to F. Let's do some E minor and then we'll go up to F. And let's try to switch to F. Let's go back to E minor. Let's go back to F. So again, all we're doing is thumb, pinch, thumb, pinch, and I'm just asking you to change chords here and there. Um, some of you might have been really good at the thumb pinch and then I made you do chords and it all fell apart, but you'll get there. Um, so let's just do what I have written for the chords that are there with a repeat sign. We got C, F, G7, C, and then we repeat. We could do that a couple times through nice and slow before we keep moving. So yeah, practice the thumb pinch with chords, starting with a C. One, two, ready, go. Then F, then G7, then C. Start over. And like for some of you, right there, that much of all we did, that's your homework. You know, like that's a thing you got to get working on <clears throat> and you'll start to use it a lot. Now you don't have to do that through a whole song. Like I could do... Where I'm just strumming where it, once in a while. And then back to the pattern. Doesn't that make for a better musical texture? Just yeah. to pick and strum, pick and strum? So plant that seed right there. That's the thumb pinch pattern. Do we have any important questions before we go on, Sarah? The only one <coughs> that was asked uh, right now is, do you have any thoughts on planting your pinky? 
Oh yeah, I guess um, my pinky is generally planted on the top of my instrument when I'm finger picking, but it's not. Um, but it's not a gospel because sometimes I want to strum, and mm -hmm. then I might be, go back to it. There are some of you who, like, if you study classical guitar in university, there's like a guy who's gonna hit your knuckles with a ruler <laughs> yes. if your t top touches your guitar because it's dampening the sound or something. But like, this is show me a measurable mm -hmm. computerized analysis of pinky touching a spruce top on a classical guitar and how much it's really, you know. Yeah. I think it's fine to touch a pinky there. I come from banjo land, and in banjo land, they anchor their hands right there all mm -hmm. the time. And uh, I think it's a good way to keep stable, but don't treat it like it's super glued there because yeah. we want to strum and do other things too. Well, and the one thing that I noticed when you were doing it is you're, you were very gently planting. Like it's a very gentle <coughs> touch that I've noticed, that yeah. I noticed when you're playing. Yeah, I think um, one thing that's hard for uh, folks who haven't been around the instrument very long yet is you want to do it right so you're all tense and stiff and hard, like, God, yeah. put my finger right here. And what we do is very natural because if it wasn't natural, we couldn't do it all day. You'd get carpal tunnel and you'd, you know. So even when I'm playing loud and hard, it's a natural, easy mm -hmm. flow of my muscles. So um, yeah, everything's focused, but it's gently focused and it's ready to move on to something else. I think we're good. I'm gonna answer Mary Lou's question. Okay, in the text. okay let's uh, plant the seed for the second pattern here. <clears throat> we often call this pattern the inside outside pattern because we're gonna play the two inside strings of our four first, and then the second two, in, then the outside strings next. So there's like these inside ones, see that, C and E, and then outside, yeah. So the way I do that is my thumb plays the C string, and then my first finger's gonna play the E string, and then my thumb plays the fourth string, and then my middle finger plays the little string. So it's like the inside two strings, and then the outside two strings, and that's with my hands, thumb, first finger, thumb, second finger, thumb, first finger, thumb, second finger, thumb, first finger, thumb, second finger. So you can practice it just like this. Thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two. <clears throat> or you could call it inside, outside, inside, outside. Mm -hmm. And this is just a way to get around all four strings easily to make a little pattern. It's not the one you have to use for every song the rest of your life. It's just a way to get moving through this. So if I do just my open strings. Inside, outside, inside, outside. Thumb one, thumb two, thumb. Make your C chord now if you want. And then you could switch to F. Start over with C. So, thumb one, thumb two, inside, outside. Let's do E minor and F, just because that would be weird. <laughs> and I get sick of playing C chords. <laughs> Let's play E minor for two full measures and then F for two full measures. And no, that's not written down, but you can do it. Pardon me. F one more time. Ooh. 
Yeah, you see what I mean? It's just like a way to get to all four strings, right? Mm -hmm. And notice it kind of goes from lowest string to highest string, so you kind of get all the notes. And if I was playing low G, I might like alter it a, a mm -hmm. little bit, yeah. but it works <coughs> It works with that. And you can play your own chords, do whatever ones you want. Yeah. Right? If you've got a song you're working on, use these instead. Or go pick out a new pretty song that you want to do with that instead. Um, there's a lot out there, whatever pretty song you want. And notice that your thumb on both these things, whether it's thumb pinch or whether it's inside outside, your thumb is bouncing between the two strings all the time. It's like a carpet. It's like a left hand in the piano going, mm -hmm. you know, playing, it's like a, its own bass player playing those lower two strings. And I think it's a good way to get through chords. Yeah, should we go on to the next page? Let's do it, next page. Okay, so we're gonna try to combine these two patterns now just to make a, uh, make a new sound. And the, what professionals do is we have dozens or hundreds of these little techniques and they just flow out of us in, in their own way, sometimes differently every song. Sometimes you kind of have it the same way every time. They're just little tools and techniques we use. So sometimes we combine patterns and switch them and flip them upside down and make it backwards and whatever. That's what you're hearing when I'm playing on stage. For, in this case, all we're doing is we're gonna play thumb pinch, then we're gonna play the inside outside pattern. Thumb pinch, inside outside. And if you look at the tablature there, see the thumb is bouncing the whole time between four and three? It's just right there. So you can even say it, thumb, pinch, inside, outside, thumb, pinch, mm -hmm. inside, outside, thumb, pinch, inside, outside. And also notice I didn't say thumb, pinch, inside, outside, thumb, I, I had a little swing to it, right? Thumb, pinch, inside, outside, thumb, pinch, inside, outside. For more of that swing feel, Sarah's gonna do that in her fancy lesson later. But that, I find that about 90% of ukulele music has a little bit of that swing to it. Whether it's country music or jazz or swing or, or music from Hawaii, mm -hmm. that, that swingy feel is just there. So I like to teach with that feel all the time. Plus I just naturally feel that way. That's the way my heart beats. So I like to have that in there. Or if I go real slow, By the way, we've never, I've never had a lesson with no sawdust under my nails ever. <laughs> I'm just like looking at these close-ups like, wow, my, I'm really clean. I've been in the ocean every day for two weeks and no, no sawdust. I tried to hire hand models to come in for this event and I couldn't afford any, so. That would be the goal to like at least get to that speed thumb and say it out loud this time thumb pinch inside out side thumb pinch inside out side thumb pinch in and then do it in the air say it out loud thumb pinch inside out side thumb pinch inside out side thumb pinch inside out side you can just practice it on the table while people are talking and you don't really want to listen Yeah, you'll get it in. I think we can add the chords now. Um, we're just gonna do the same chords over again. C, F, G, seven, C. Two measures of each here, that's what's on the page. And we'll go about this tempo. One, two, ready, go. So, even if you can't do that all the way through without making a mistake, that's a great goal. This kind of thumb pinch, inside, outside. And then you can put that with your own songs and your own chords and just do whatever song you want to work on. I wanted to get through these two patterns kind of quickly to plant the seed, because I know folks want to work on John Henry too, which is why we're here, really. And in the John Henry, I use a lot of these techniques just kind of broken up and split up, etc. But before you can get crazy and break them up and split them up, you have to just master the easy part, right? 
Um, and and uh, Sarah, we're going 60 minutes, right? We have, yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to double if check. If you go a little okay. over, it's okay too. We're good. That's about how much I wanted to do on that. Yeah. So, are there questions in the chat? Yep. Chat. So there's one question that is not a. Um, not necessarily what you've gone over, but mm -hmm. I wanted to, now that we have a little break, I can ask it, which is, when you strum with your finger picks on, mm -hmm. do you use the thumb strum for both boom and chick as a, oh. uh, as part like Lester Flat did? Okay, yeah, so, well, yeah, uh, I love when people ask questions like this, because I'm like, of course I'm prepared to talk for 60 minutes about the history of thumb picks. <laughs> But I also have to take a lesson. I have to take a page out of a, a basketry teacher I had this year, where sometimes, sometimes that's outside of the scope of this lesson, right? Yeah. I'll just say this: I can strum everything with just my finger. I often do like kind of low note with a thumb, and then the rest with a finger. Mm -hmm. Lester Flat played everything with his thumb pick, but mm -hmm. I follow more what um, Mabel Carter did, which is that she played a thumb pick and a finger pick. So what he's talking about is. That's just with the thumb pick. I would probably do thumb finger, thumb finger. But it could be all thumb pick. But, um, you know, I wear picks where I, my fingers and my thumbs can strum down or up, while other folks don't have the right picks to go up with their finger picks, so I understand yeah. how to do that. Cool. But we can next time we'll talk about sixty minutes of finger picks. That would be a fun lesson, actually. <laughs> guess, yeah. Someone wants it besides me, right? Yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. All right. Are we moving on to John Henry? I think we can. Okay. So this is from our book, uh, "Let the Work I Do Speak for Me." It's a book and a CD all together. So Nicole and I wrote and arranged a whole bunch of uh, work songs and labor songs and. It, those sorts of things from American folk music and then we put them in this book where the book has all the chords and lyrics and then it has tablature for whatever instrument I played so there's some banjo tablature there's some ukulele tablature and there's some baritone ukulele tablature and at the bottom of the page you can see a little tutorial link so you can go work on that later too <clears throat> okay so this is a song where you can just strum and sing um, and then I also have like a finger picking fancy page which we're going to work on and that's basically my solo I play whenever it's time to play a solo on the recording. And uh, I think on this recording, it's a whole string band. So there's also guitar, there's also bass, um, and there's Nicole playing chords too. So um, yeah, so John Henry is uh, a traditional American folk song. It goes through African-American and white people music. And um, you'll hear it sung by blues folks, bluegrass folks, all kinds of people. And um, people argue about whether or not Jen, John Henry was a real person. Um, mm -hmm. He might have been. There's different ideas about that. That, again, is another 60-minute topic for me. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about a guy. It's about the mechanization of American work. So in it, there's this guy who's really good at, at uh, uh, a steel driver, was a, a guy who um, worked on the railroads and could um, drill holes quickly, basically. And the way they used to do that is with a big, long steel pole with a, a certain kind of point on it. And they would put it in the in the hole, and they would hit it, and they would turn it 90 degrees and hit it, turn it 90 degrees God. and hit it, and that's how you drill holes. Mm -hmm. And um, that of course gets mechanized eventually. And so, uh, you know, uh, in this, um, I got to make sure I get my verses. Yeah. So in this, he's supposed to compete himself against a steam powered drill, mm. and he both wins and dies. Yeah. So we can just let that sink in. <laughs> This is about the AI overlords taking over, you know? I don't <laughs> yes, know. Yes, you know? oh my God. It's like we both win, and basically it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's all good and it's all bad. Yeah. Technology allows us to be here all together, and it also allows other bad things to happen. Yeah. And steam power was great for American progress, and it was terrible for American labor. Or it's good for American labor. I, <laughs> basically, I don't have it figured out, but that's what these songs are about. That's the mm -hmm. eternal question. So, you know we're still trying to deal with these things. Still there. So we can just sing and strum a little bit before we get into the picking. We've got an A minor chord in this one, but otherwise it's chords you've all seen before, C and G. Oh, John Henry, he was a steel driving man. He drove steel all over the land. And he said, before I let 
that old steam drill beat me down I'm gonna die with my hammer in my hand Lord, Lord, I'm gonna die with my hammer in my hand Now the man who made that old steam drill He thought it was mighty fine But John Henry, he drove down 14 feet And that steam drill, it only made it nine Lord, Lord Oh, the steam drill, it only made it nine. One more of those. John Henry's captain, he sat down on a rock. He said, I think that tunnel's falling in. Then John Henry, he smiled at the captain and he said, Well, boss, that's my hammer sucking wind, Lord, Lord. Boss, that's my hammer sucking wind. And so that's halfway through, you know. That's a little bit about how this vocal and the strum goes. And yes, I know. I know Nicole and I don't write down the chords for every set of words. And I know many of you are mad at me right now. <laughs> I know that. No one's voiced that, though. Well, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> through the I've camera. Done, I've done enough of these. I know there's somebody who's like, why don't you have the chords written over every word for the whole song? Yeah. It's because Nicole and I are trying to get you to memorize the chord set. Because it's the same chord set for the next four minutes, okay? Mm -hmm. And the voice and the melody tells you when it's time to change. So like, John Henry, he was a steel driving man. He drove steel all over the land. Like, something needs to change. <laughs> yes. And it's an A minor chord. So that's why we do that. This music is supposed to be by ear. And so we don't write out everything. And I'm sorry. Yay. But you'll learn it. No, I mean, this is a very good point, though. Because, uh, again, not only that, but if you had your entire library of songs that have the chords over every single you know change how big that how large I'm yeah. exponentially larger and, yeah. and again part of it is and then you're also stuck because if you want to change keys you can't change keys and having that all of a sudden it, it always in your your vision mm -hmm. can throw you off yeah compared to yeah. understanding the patterns itself and then being able to adapt so yeah i think that's great yeah i totally think that that's the way to do it so that's yeah. why i don't have it written out for everything and also some of these folks are used to that idea because when we teach songs especially if it's just a progression we just have a box chart and yeah. then your lyrics underneath. And we're like, here's your form. Yeah. Let's play. Yeah. And I, as I'm singing this song, I just like can't help but think and make connections to the conversations I've had in Hawaii this week. Yeah. And like, you know, there's this part where uh, John Henry, as using just his hammer, he can drill 14 feet and the steam drill only made it nine feet that day. So sometimes people's actual labor is very skilled and fast but we're just convinced that machines will fix it all, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at these instruments made in the 1880s and 90s and like looking at what these guys could do. And someone I was with was like, oh, this must have taken this guy months to make. Mm -hmm. And I was like, not a chance. They made this instrument in a week yeah. or a weekend because they were, they were young immigrant labor working in someone else's cabinet shop and making ukuleles to try to make some extra cash. It may have been fancy, but they knew hand skills and handwork, and they could work fast because yeah. it's their job to work fast. Because if you don't work fast, you don't get paid. Right. And so we have a precious idea about hand labor that hand labor must mean slow. Mm. It doesn't always mean slow. It means skillful. Yes. And if you go to Japan and talk to a Japan craftsman and you accuse them of being slow, that's all. There's like a whole different mm. cultural thing with that because yeah. like hand hand skills in Japan are supposed to be efficient, right? Yes. And so it's like. We're not talking about slow food movement here. It's like when you watch me with a chisel, like I'm going with the chisel, I'm getting some wood off, right? Yeah. And so anyway, that's just me thinking about this stuff. Like these guys are people who are trying to make things that are beautiful, but they gotta get them out the door. So John Henry, he made it through 14 feet because he wanted to go home and see Polly Ann, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway, so let's get to the picking now. What I use the picking for is this is like my solo I play like in between sections. And it's got a lot of the things in it that we did before. It's got special new things, too. And uh, I don't keep one technique through the whole song because that's not what professionals do. Unlike my other books, the Let the Work I Do Speak For Me book really tabs out really what I play. So it might break all my own rules, but we'll be okay. Um, as we read the tablature, you can see just by a, at a glance that my thumb is bouncing between the bottom strings kind of the whole time. Um, that's its job. And I'm basically playing the melody and I'm playing the accompaniment at the same time. That's the point of this. Melody and accompaniment, same time. Fingers are the melody, thumb is the accompaniment. So I'm just gonna play it a couple times slow and that will lead us to what to do next.
I need a second chance. <laughs> That was hard for me to play slow. Mm -hmm. It was really weird. It was hard for me to look at the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done it in a while. And also, I don't look at papers anymore, right? Like, I have to write it down for you folks, but then I kind of just play it. Yeah. Um, so this is a document of a time and place in a situation. It is not gospel. When I play it, I might do it different. But what I'm basically doing is playing the melody. So we can look at the finger parts on the top, and I'm playing, Oh, John Henry, he was a steel driving. That's why I wanted to sing it first for you folks. Because okay. I wanted to plan it in your ears because it's the melody, basically. Lots of pinches, though. See how in it? We have lots of pinches everywhere. Whenever there's two notes above each other, that means the fingers are pinching with the thumb. And then we've got those things that look like eighth notes. That's usually a thumb and a finger with playing eighth notes in between. Are people already asking about the slides? So yes, somebody yeah. did ask about the slides. I said, he's going to get there. We know our market. We know what you want. <laughs> we know you want to talk about slides. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we'll do slides. I haven't I haven't uh, done a morning broadcast like this in many long years. Yeah. And I'm reminded of all the early morning radio shows yes. we go do when we were on the road. It's yeah. like you got to get stay up too late, drink too much whiskey, get up really early, go in the studio, and get right in front of a bunch of professional microphones, and then you like go to play the song. They're like. <clears throat> Uh, like, hey, hey, let's take it down a key, guys. Let's take it down three keys. <laughs> no, but not only yeah. that. And then it's like, oh, uh, make sure you get this close to the mic. Oh, don't don't touch the table though. Oh, oh make yeah, sure you, you table, make yeah. sure you only look this way. And and <laughs> so, oh my God. so already, you know, you can't even focus on like trying. To... <laughs> yeah, there's like a there's like a really popular video on YouTube of me trying to sing a song in a famous radio station, and I can't get up to the key. Mm. Oh dear. Mm. And it's like it go it's around. And it's like there's all these other videos where like there's lot there's no views. And this video of like me not finding the key has <laughs> oh, no. got, got a lot of views. I was like Where yeah. I was trying to go, where are you going for the two hundred and fiftieth time? And I like couldn't get up to where I was like Oh man. Oh. <laughs> it's easier now when there's less whiskey though. We're doing better with less whiskey. Okay, so anyway, slides. We should talk about the slides. A slide like a hammer on or a pull off is a thing you do with your left hand after you've already plucked with your right hand. So we don't have to re-pluck to get the slid note. It happens after you've plucked. So we'll, if I put um, my finger on the C string second fret, third string second fret, we're gonna pluck that third string and then I'm gonna slide up to four. So I'm gonna do my little rev trick and do this. Watch, I pluck it and then slide, okay? I point over there to show you that I'm not re-plucking. <laughs> That's from little rev. Go donate to his PayPal. Okay. So you can practice from two to four and the third string. And dude, we use these all the time in string band music. It's super important in the fiddles and the banjos and the guitars. Obviously in the steel guitar. Okay. Now let's try a slide second string, first finger, up from one to three. You will have trouble making the second note be as loud as you want at first. But it's also not designed to be as loud. If every note we played had the same volume, it doesn't sound as sexy. So now I'm doing those two notes together. So here's your fingering. Second finger, first finger. I'm gonna pluck them with my over here with my thumb and my first finger. A little pinch for you. 
For some of you, this might be enough. This is your take home from your hour long workshop. Because this is the slide you'll use all the time in ukulele music. Great. Or try sliding it somewhere else. See what you come up with. I don't know. I mean, this one sounds in key, that's why we do it. But. <laughs> Let's get loco and try to slide backwards. I mean, I think that's the slide that's in the whole piece, yeah? Mm -hmm. Pretty much that. And then there is a moment where after we slide, I kind of pick those middle strings again. That's okay, we're already there. Okay, so, I know we had to deal with slides. Um, now, let's just start from the beginning. Uh, sorry that those first two pickup notes are a little squ squished into the tab, but those are quarter notes. So it's like three, those are first two notes. So we even just go that far. Three. See how those are both pinches, but your thumb has to move. One more time. And then I'm gonna pick the two outside strings. That's the rest of the measure. If we can get that measure down, you have 90% of the song. Because that's like the trick. So it's like, um, let's just do it a few more times really slow. Again, go. Oh, yeah, thanks. Let's put that on there. Again. And then second measure, we start with a pinch, and you've got your third finger down here. I know it sounds weird like by itself, but Ooh. you know, it's all in there <laughs> fancy, right? Slow, it doesn't always sound right, but you'll get there. So let's go this tempo. Ready, go. And then third measure is just notes by themselves. Ooh, slide. Slide. That's a cool lick to practice. Do you feel like a banjo player now? You should. And notice the timing on that slide too. It's not a straight. It swings, doesn't it? Yeah, that's nice. I don't even think about it. But yeah, those notes have to swing. It sounds bluesy that way, right? Yeah. And even slow. Yeah, so let that second fret ring for just the hair before sliding. Not this. Yes. And that's useful for some other song. That, mm -hmm. that could be the feel for something else. But Now, as we go forward, I'm going to give some ways to differentiate in the instruction here. Some of you, you could just strum the chord along with it if you don't want to do all this stuff. The chords are written there. Some of you maybe just want to kind of play the thumb accompaniment with the chords just to get, like, play along. Some of you want to do the melody and the thumbs. Some of you might want to just do the melody. You can start sequestering yourself <laughs> if you're feeling overwhelmed because that happens you don't have to master it all right now now my goal at, by this point in the workshop is even if your fingers don't do what I want them to do yet what I want is your brain and your heart to know what you should do to get there <laughs> Yes. Um, you know because we don't have to get this all in one time I didn't write it all in one sitting so so I'm gonna play the first three bars and, and then we're gonna go or and stop at that phrase and we're gonna do that one a few times. Again, go. So like, that could be great homework right there. Get one phrase down to tempo, because then when you go to try to unpack the rest of it, it's going to be very similar. So when I continue, there's no slides in that. It sounds, it's actually an easier version of the first phrase. 
So I'm going to start the second phrase, which is the last two notes of the first line. We start with the last two notes of the first line and go through the A minor chord. And actually, the A minor is mainly just playing, is just picking the chord with this pattern. So I'm gonna do the same thing again, last two notes of the first line. Yeah, now I'm gonna combine the first two phrases. We're gonna go back to the start and try to play two phrases. Ready, go. Stop, and we're going to do it again. First two phrases. A little slower. I'm sorry, I'm going a little quick. Ready, go. So let's do a thing now where you take your hands off your instrument and stop playing for a minute, okay? Because <laughs> by the time we get to this point in the workshop too, you're like trying to do it, trying to do it, trying to do it, trying to, it's like, okay, stop. Take your two hands and let them dangle fully down, all the way down. Take a big breath. And feel the whole weight of your arms and hands all the way down to your fingertips. And chill out for a second. So we can reset. Notice that I, I worked on the first two notes, then the first measure and a half, then the first three measures, then the whole first phrase. Then we worked on the second phrase the same way. Then we stopped and went back and did the first two phrases all over again. And then we're not going on trying to play the whole song. We're going like bit by bit and I'm looping back over and over again. That I think is a great learning strategy for you. You don't have to just blunder through the piece over and over again and make all the same mistakes. You should stop and chunk it up. Now we do this a bunch, and then there will be times where you want to just go all the way through, and that's fine. But I think this kind of looping back, looping back will help you. Some of these folks on the, on the stream have been doing, have been studying with me for over 10 years, and, they, and I think they will attest to this kind of focused work. It's, it's a great way to do it, especially learning somebody else's stuff. Yeah? Do your arms feel better from letting them dangle? Mine do. Sarah, do we have chitty chats? No, no, good. no. That means everyone's just focused. Everybody's, everybody's good. Okay. So that means we can go on to the third phrase. The third phrase starts at the last two beats of the second line. And it should sound pretty familiar to you. First, I'll play it by myself just for you to hear. Even Craig recognizes that phrase. It's the first phrase over again. Mm -hmm. So I told you, if you just learn the first phrase, you're going to get a lot of mileage, right? So that's the first phrase again. You've already learned about that. So that means we can go to the top of the page and we can play three phrases now. And we can do it. Here we go. Ready, go. things okay let's try, go to the f oh wait we could we should do it again sorry i wanted to jump ahead so it's like uh if we're talking about kinds of phrases it's like a b a it's like do something do something new do the first thing over again let's try it from the beginning a little slower ready go Fourth line now. This is where, where the melody we're trying to get is 
die with my hammer in my hand, Lord, Lord. So we start at the fourth line, start with just a pinch of the two open strings. And then, and for those notes, just my right thumb is just doing them. So we have our slides, but I'm putting a thumb in between, right? This is total banjo land, like putting this, this note as a drone in between. I just realized I kind of missed my banjo. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in Hawaii for two weeks pretending I don't play the banjo, right? <laughs> no, I'm not that kind of gringo. I just play the ukulele, right? <laughs> I am that kind of gringo. I kind of miss my banjo. It misses me, maybe. Well, a lot of these techniques, so just globally in perspective, the ukulele has a reentrant string normally, right? Our high G. So does the five string banjo. So do a lot of really cool other strange folk instruments from around the world, especially through the Caribbean, South and Central America. It's like the, these Portuguese and Spanish instruments, these little guitarras came all throughout. They got planted down in different places and then indigenous folks changed them, right? So the ukulele is just related to all this, you know? And the, um, the five string banjo is kind of that coming from West African through the island places like the Azores and whatever into the Caribbean, into America. So yeah, these reentrant strings, that's where it's at. Especially for dance music. Okay, let's do the slidey part again, ready? Again. Start the fourth line. Two, ready, go. And if we go on and look at the fifth line, it starts the same as the fourth line. So you've seen that already. And that's the whole piece. So let's start the fourth line. One, two, ready, go. Are we pacing this about where we should pace it? We're kind of getting through it as we that should. Sounds good. Yeah, I, sounds I, you know, just a gentle reminder again: make sure you swing those eighth notes because it's, yeah. it, it changes the song completely. And I think that gives it so much flavor and so much uh, soul yeah. with with that in. The other thing I also want to remind people is that this is recorded, so you can go <laughs> back and watch it and pause it and loop it and all that great stuff. I guess I forget too. Like for sixty minutes, this whole time in my brain and in my body, it's just And when I start talking for a while and we chit chat and whatever, guess what's still happening? And it's still swinging, right? And then when I go to count off, you don't hear it in my brain, but in my brain, I like skip the pickup beat, three, four, and I'm like back in. It's like there's a guy in the corner playing brushes on the snare drum. Yeah. And that's just how I live, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I there. Love it. uh, but it's, just, it's true. It's like, it's that feel, right? Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. the stuff that people don't realize that musicians are doing. It's like we're living in the feel of what it is so that it's natural. We don't have to, like. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's just how I feel. I was just, while we were playing, while I was doing that, we're talking about John Henry and singing that song. I was just thinking about when I went to your hometown. Oh, Birmingham. And there's a big giant statue. Is that, that is a mining statue, right? I is believe it? it is. Yeah, it's like a, it's a miner or what was it again? I don't remember. I don't. Mm, oh, I, I'm putting I'm, you on the spot. That's all right. That's all right. Well, yeah, we think of, we often think of. Well, uh, steel is big. Birmingham was built by yeah, steel. That's yeah. why you would have that. Yeah, and we often think of, we don't think of the American South as an industrial location. Mm. Oh, that was like. <clears throat> you know what I mean? We think of like Pittsburgh as the mm -hmm. Rust Belt, but there, it's there. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a history of that stuff, and there's a lot of mining and industrial yeah. work that went that happened in, in the southern United States. And that's where all this John Henry stuff, you know, it's all from. Uh, whether it was, uh, you know, enslaved people or non-enslaved people, it's still really hard work. Yeah. You know, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Do we have any questions before yeah, we... Just for talk? giggles. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, you, you want to do it on Loji? Yeah, someone wants yeah, to do it. Yeah, I'll play it on a Loji. little bit. <clears throat> It'll sound good. It just won't sound yeah. as banjo -y, Yeah, you know? exactly. Can't you trim your strings off, Craig? Come on. Oh, that's me. Oh, Sarah. Hey. Sorry. <laughs> you can't blame Craig We'll for get that. out the nail clippers, I... and I'll, I'll clip your strings for Yeah, you. I told I'm, I'm $75 an hour to clip your strings, okay? <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> okay, so I'll play the same thing, and I'll try to not change anything, but it'll be with Loji, okay? sounds better in low G. Mm -hmm. Nice. It's cool that way. Yeah, right? you just don't get that that it doesn't sound like a banjo quite as much. It's anymore. more like a guitar yeah. version. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And it's it, nice. Well, and I play, when I play with Nicole, I play baritone. Mm. And so I usually have a fourth string that's low, and that's cool. Um, and sometimes when I play my ukulele, I've got my baritone capoed at the fifth fret. And so technically mm. I'm playing low G at that moment, and <laughs> I don't really mind. It's fine. Um, yeah, let me play it like at speed now with the low G and see what that sounds nice. like. That's the thing is as much as, as as fun as as we have like talking about high g low g it, it they, they both have incredible strengths um yeah and, and just their own you know kind of identity in that sense when i hear this way through parts i like are when we get to hammer in yeah, my we actually the... get to go down because what i was doing before is it was like an octave up hammer in my and said so we get and then for that, like, oh, that's rad, right? Like, and then when we get to the A minor to hear a, a richer A minor yeah. sound with a low A instead of two high A's, I get it. So again, you just <clears throat> need to buy a, another instrument and have one high G, one low G. And... Just play two at the same time. It's no big deal. <laughs> <clears throat> It'll work. You can do it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, I don't think it's worth fighting about. Oh, no, we just yeah. have fun. Just do we that. always have fun. That's a really great question, though. And the slides. Yeah. It's just got, it's more guitar sounding instead of less banjo sounding. Can you play high G uh, in tempo uh, just to compare? Yep. when I recorded it, I think I was playing my banjo uke, and I had a bass and a guitar backing me up. So in that, there would be no reason for me to play low G whatsoever. Mm. I've got a job to do, and it's yeah. to fill this certain frequency range, yeah. and I'd rather just ride up there with the banjo uke. It's like I'm playing the violin mandolin role, and I'd rather do that than try to compete with the guitar. So it's like, yeah. I, I, so the banjo uke is, and when I play in a string band, um, it's usually banjo uke, and it's high G, because I can be the loudest person in the room then. Yeah. And be in charge. <laughs> I do feel like low G tends to lend itself more as, especially for the solo players that mm -hmm. like want as much range as possible, yeah. um, where uh, it, it's just a nicer, tighter fit with the high G for like band settings. And it just, it's yeah. just, yeah, like you said, just, it's right. That's your, that's your yeah. role right it, there. And, and actually the last four or five days when we've been on this island and we've been hanging out a lot with Brian Tolentino and he's been talking about like, well, what's it like to be a soloist and what's it like to play mm -hmm. in a band? And a lot of our, 
uh, colleagues who are a little younger than me or younger than me decided that the way to make it in this world is to be a soloist like Jake. Mm -mm. Even if they don't want to play like Jake, they're just like, oh, well, this is a thing now. You're a, a solo ukulele man and you, or woman and you go out and do this. Right? Yeah. That's cool. But Brian's trying to tell everybody, like, go get in a band, bro. Like, yeah. Go learn how to play with people. Back you people up. So accompany much people. More, yeah. like, it's more fun. I think it is. It's yeah. not all on you then. I like playing solo. It's fine. Yeah. You know, um, but it's good to collaborate because music is supposed to be about community. Yeah. And uh, it's fun to be in a community. Yeah. I think even when I, I did meet you early on in my career, too, like even though I was hired as a soloist, I, I love just dra dragging as many people on stage with me as possible. I, I liked that band setting. It, it was so much more fun and just so much more full. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. Brian, too, is like he, Brian still plays like four or five gigs a week. Yeah. yeah, but it's not all the same thing, right? Yeah, it's no. like, oh, this little I'm playing was this person over here, and then I got to back this person up for this thing, and then yeah. we're going to this camp, and then I'm doing that. And he's a very useful person. Yep, he can fill a lot of different roles. Yeah, and, and so I think in the world, Nicole and I value being useful. Yeah. Yes. And um, being useful means you have to collaborate. And actually, because of you, seeing um usually you're like the house bass player too mm -hmm. at, at a lot of these festivals and because of that when, once we started doing like some of our own events and and playing out a lot more i actually picked up the bass just to be able to help fill that role because yeah, yeah you could have six ukuleles on stage or you know yeah <laughs> having some low yeah. end always it just makes everyone sound helps. better yeah. Mm -hmm. right yeah. and everyone has more fun the music is more yeah. easily heard yeah yeah so i think it's great um do we have more questions on the picking that we should hit before we do other things or move on or whatever it is? I don't think so. I think we are okay. Already, Every, already everybody's in, everybody no, everybody's just everybody's really enjoying this. Oh, one person did say, what is the beats per minute we should aim for ish? One, okay, click, two. click, 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 click. That's probably like one thirty five. Give me give me give me a second. Oh, Craig is tapping. I'd probably play about 135. Let's just test me, Craig. Okay, go ahead. Click. I think it's 135. Click or 140. it up. You got your clicks there? Are you looking it up? Oh, click, click it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, like. It's like 215. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. I don't know. That's 215? That's 215. That's too fast. Yeah. Yeah. Try, try, 180. 180. try 180. I'll 180. try to play to 180. I'm so old timey now. I don't. I, there. Yeah, 180. I think uh, that's fine. I think that's nice. Yeah, 130 would have been like. Yeah, that's too. Well, that's a good practice tempo. Yeah. That I should bring this up though. American string band music sounds fast. Because mm. it's for dancing or it's for, mm. and, right. but the vocals don't sound fast. Mm. Right. Okay. So, oh, John Henry, he was a steel driving man. Sounds like relaxed, right? But underneath that is. Get you moving. Yeah. So that's why people get frustrated with my music that they want to learn is because you have to be able to pick fast to even hang. Yeah. Right. And sometimes though, if I don't, uh, but you also could do. Right. Notice the emphasis. Yeah, just <laughs> <laughs> on the two and four. That's a that's what the banjo you should do in a string band, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's fine too. Um, yeah, good question on the tempo. I hadn't really thought about that. But I spent tons of years with the metronome, and then I stopped using the metronome. Mm -hmm. And now, but when I come back to it, I'm always like, yeah, dude, this is good. Yeah. When I learn new pieces and learn it off the record and then put it slower on a metronome and yeah. sort it out. And actually, um, y y there's like a drop F tuning in the, for the uh, Scholar Packet. Do you mind doing a little bit of a uh, sample on what that even sounds like? Oh, sure. Like I, it's just G down to C mm -hmm. or G down to F, right? How cool. Sounds good on low G too, or low F now, right? Yeah. So I just tuned my G down to F, yeah. So that's for the Scholar Packet. If you have John Greer's two-step, that's what you're going to have to do is just tune your G string down to an F. Yeah. Um, oh, there's another. It's There's two strings that have to change for that, right? 
I can actually scroll yeah. to it. I have to go down. And your A string also has to go down to, as well. To G, yeah. Oh, interesting. You'll be okay. <laughs> That's what we'll be doing. Nice. Yeah. And that's a traditional banjo tuning. That's why we're in that. Ah, cool. So we'll talk about that. Very cool. And hang up. But also, doesn't that sound nice with a nine in it? Yeah. As a home. Awesome. Yes. Secrets. Okay. And also, FYI, the scholar packet for my mini lesson, I'm actually working with a metronome. So all of this metronome talk is totally <laughs> going to be very useful for if you've gotten your scholar packet once I film that lesson. Yeah, I might actually use the metronome for our scholar lesson too. Just be fun to watch yeah. people do it with, watch yeah. me work with a metronome because yep. it's a thing. Nice. Now it you is. only have a few days left on your Hawaii trip. Is there? Uh, I know you're going to be hard at work uh, getting things done once you get back home. But is there anything big coming up this year that uh, you'd like to mention? Um, I'm supposed to mention all the other things I'm streaming for that I need to be promoted. Oh yeah, so we're doing some things this year with this thing called Uke West. Cool. And they're from Canada, and they have like a whole year curriculum of different guest artists. So if nice. you go to ukewest.com, I'm teaching a lesson with them in May, I believe. But you can, they also have new teachers all the time. And it's a really cool, just totally online community. Um, and it's like you, you can do just the one thing or you can pay a membership for the year. Nice. That's a cool streaming thing. And then everything else we're doing pretty much right now is in person. So we're running our Manuka ukulele band camp coming up. That one's so fun. Yeah, and I I'll be going to Port Go. Townsend this year and a few other things. Yes, yeah. Port Townsend is also another awesome one. Yeah, we're just doing Northwest stuff. Um, now, one person asked a great question. It's not necessarily ukulele related, but so um, they're from the UK and they're saying, what type of dance is traditional for this style of music? Oh, well, I mean, like, this wouldn't be one where people are calling dancing to it, right? Mm -hmm, like, right. so so usually um, African-American vernacular music is generally not one where people are, like, calling out what to do, like lines or squares or rounds or Morris dancing or something like that. So I think this is just the old-time version of shaking your butt. Fun! Just whatever you <laughs> want to do. You know, people... Yeah. Like, so this yeah. is kind of... This beat and this rhythm has kind of got, like, a juke joint kind of feel. Like, mm -hmm. it's got, like, a little bluesy shuffle to it. Yeah. So it, that's what people would probably be doing, you know? Nice. Um, awesome. Yeah. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for joining us. It's always so great to see you. It's yeah. been way yeah. too long. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, thank you to all of you guys out there who joined us live and who are watching the replay. Again, if you want to support these uh, live streams, uh, please purchase a packet. Um, if you, I know there are still people that are having a rough time during mm -hmm. uh, the, the fallout from COVID still and yeah. whatnot. If, if you can't afford a, a packet at this point, just other people us. are paying it forward for you. Yeah. So please just email us and we'll get you hooked up. Um, but thank you for everyone who are supporting these live streams and purchasing mm -hmm. packets. Um, we can't do this without you. So thank you. Yeah. Um, any other housekeeping things, Sarah? Just remember, please join us tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you want to be a part of the live pre premiere of the concert, get the free digital program. It actually has too many lessons in it. And then, um, and if you can't join us live, it's all right. It's going to be up in beautiful 4K for you to watch on your giant TV if you have one. Um, and then, uh, yes, folks who are saying, can I put play this on my banjo uke? Yes, yeah, you can. Of course. You should. Um, so I think that is it for now. So thank you so much again, Aaron, for Thanks joining for us. Me. And Aaron, the best website to, to make sure they're locked in with everything that you're doing? Yeah, so the music website is quietamericanmusic.com. And our musical instruments are um, thebeansprout.com. And we kind of have uh, strings and books in both places, you know, but because uh, mm -hmm. whatever people stumble across. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, we, the, and uh, this one is from that book and CD, Let the Work I Do Speak for Me. And mm -hmm. that's on both places. So. Excellent. Go grab it. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you us. Thank you guys folks. so much Thanks, for Sarah. joining Thanks, us. Woohoo! Woo Aloha, everybody. Thank you.